uh, my company, EcoHouse, started this in uh, 2008 with Greg Kuss, who was one of the founding members of GEO. G uh, Greg's not here today, but um, we started this company uh, primarily doing energy efficiency. Uh, we were both really motivated to do something because we saw a huge problem with climate change, global warming. My friend Dan Baer is here this morning. I'm involved in a group locally called Simply Living. And that was kind of my motivation in starting this company, was trying to do something to reduce fossil, fu fossil fuel use. And um, as Bill said, I built my own house in uh, 2000, tried to make the house as energy efficient as possible. That was a real learning experience. Um, I started this company. I learned a lot more about energy efficiency. I've gone through lots of training. At this point, I've audited about uh, 2,500 homes in central Ohio. That's through the uh, Columbia Gas Program and through AEP, Energy Efficiency Program. So, still actively doing that. Um, I've also had a long-term interest in solar, and I put solar on my own house uh, in 2009. I got a state grant to do that. You know, sold SRACs. It was really economically made a lot of sense, but it's also just a great learning experience to go through the whole process of designing it, installing it, and really got me interested in doing solar. And um, I started talking to people that I was doing energy audits with, and we started installing some residential solar systems. And just kind of like the whole solar industry in general, there's been an explosion in solar. So I'm, I'm going to show you some slides, but probably a lot of people in this room are aware that you know solar has really gone mainstream. You, we, we might not see it so much right here in Ohio, but... If you look at what's happening around the world, like in Europe especially, in the United States, you know, uh, California, New Jersey, there's just huge amounts of solar being installed. And, um, you know, it's rapidly becoming uh, an important piece of the energy mix in this country, which I'm really excited about. <laughs> you know, I think that's great. So, <clears throat> just, you know, what we're doing is, is on a pretty small scale, Dave, is one of the you know larger companies in Ohio, but I think what what I am doing just goes to show that you know um, you know the demand is really there for solar. There's a lot of people that want to do it, um, you know, and there's a huge market for this type of product just right here in Central Ohio. Um, Greg, I always <laughs> I put this up here just because. I always like to just tell people the important thing to do first is energy efficiency because that's easy. It, it's a lot less expensive than trying to generate electricity. So it's always important to do your eat your energy efficiency vegetables before you do your solar dessert. <laughs> and um, it's a lot, you know, it's a lot cheaper and less expensive to save energy than it is to produce energy. But at the same time, solar is really an exciting place to work and to be involved in. And what's happened in our business here is that we've really transitioned from doing primarily energy efficiency to now doing primarily solar installations. So just in the last two years, it's not a lot, but we've done, after this month, we will have done 25 residential solar installations. And it's growing quick, quickly. It's actually more than I can really handle <laughs> at this point. Just in this month, I'm doing eight of them. So... <clears throat> Some of that has to do with the program that AEP currently has, which is ending at the end of this month. Um, what program is that? So, <coughs> it's a program that has to do with the renewable energy credits. There, who asked the question? I did. You did. Okay. So, um, because of the House Bill 221, um, the large utilities have to buy so much of their power from renewable energy sources and specifically solar and that's created the market for uh, renewable energy credits and so one of the programs that AP came out with to buy those credits was uh, they would pay they had two different programs one was residential one was commercial the commercial program is, has ended already because the funding on that was used up but the residential program ends here at the end of June what they're doing is they're paying they're buying renewable energy credits for 15 years and paying for those up front. So it's a really great incentive for residential customers to pay for about a third of the cost of the whole system and get a check basically right up front from AEP. And then, you know, they don't have to worry about dealing with the renewable energy credits 
for 15 years. So it's a really, it's a wonderful incentive and a lot of people kind of made the decision to go solar because of that recently. The work has to be completed by the end of the month? It has to be completed. So it's, almost, it's too late at this point to really get into it. There's not enough time left, but um, there's a lot of work being done. I'm sure all the solar installers are really busy right now doing a lot of uh, why is this, why residential. Why is it ending? Why are they ending it? It's just with the way they originally set it up, you know, they, they wanted to buy a certain amount of SREX and uh, put aside funding for that. You know, subsequent to them setting up this program, the market for the SREX has really dropped. The value of them has gone way down. And they've, a lot of solar has been installed, and so they've really fulfilled their requirement, at least for the near, the near term. For the period. Right. Now, they may come out with other things in the future. I, you know, I don't work for AEP. I don't know what they're going to do. So, you said they're not going to do anything until yeah. this whole issue with Senator <coughs> Sykes is kind of resolved. There's some... Like right. I said, the RPS is kind of under attack, and mm -hmm. it's creating a lot of uncertainty in the market. So AP said we're going to sit back and wait until this whole thing is resolved before we come up with a new program. Which shows the damage, whether or not it passes or not. It's damaging what's happening in Ohio, just the mere fact that they're even questioning it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, that can always change, too. A number of other states have recently like, made their ener solar energy requirements higher. There's been three or four states that have done that recently. Yeah. So it can change depending on the politics. Is AEP active in supporting Senate Bill 221? They're <laughs> more neutral. <laughs> That's another neutral. They're the best They're compliant. for public people. Yes. They're, 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 part of that. they're not fighting it, right. And they made a lot of investments. You know, they set up these programs. They, they've installed a large solar farm. So this just shows you uh, a graph of solar installations in the United States. You can just see how it's gone up. It's basically doubled each of the last four years, and that's probably going to continue. Um, this slide just shows by state. You can see a lot of it's in California, <coughs> by far the most, Arizona, New Jersey, Ohio. This is, I think, last year. Ohio was number 16. So we're not at the bottom. But, uh, we're ahead of Florida. We're ahead of, ahead of that Florida. That is weird. I was kind of surprised to see Wisconsin down there so far because they seem like they have a lot of activity. <clears throat> so some of the reasons why there's so much solar being installed, one is just the prices for the components have come way down. So it's been a huge drop in the cost of solar panels in the last few years. Um, <clears throat> we talked about some of the incentives, like the, uh, the state you know, renewable portfolio standard has created the market for SREX. In Ohio, each state has different programs going on. Other states have, you know, a lot more local incentives than we do here in Ohio, but it's always changing. You know, there used to be a really nice state grant that existed up until the end of 2010 that no longer is out there. Um, still, the 30% federal tax credit. Dave said that's good until 2016, so that's a big incentive. Um, <clears throat> and I think one thing that's happening is just more and more people are aware of this as a possibility for themselves and kind of like looking at it seriously. You know, they may travel to other parts of the world and see a lot of solar being installed or be, be in California, know people who have done it. It's kind of like the electric car situation, you know, there's, the whole thing is getting some traction. So once you maybe know somebody that's done it, you're much more likely to do it yourself. Um, so there's lots of great reasons to go solar. You know, I think personally, one of the strongest reasons for me is just you're no longer produce, producing as much emissions, you're cutting back on your carbon footprint. That's my motivation. Um, you know, in addition, you're getting control of your electric bill. Um, you know, your electric bill is going to be a lot less. You're basically paying for the electric bill up front. And, you know, after 10 years, you've paid off the solar and you're getting basically free electricity for the next four, you know, 30 years after that. So um, it's, a, it's also a, it's a good investment, you know, if you look at just the return on the investment, um, depending on, you know, how big the system is, it's, it's a pretty favorable return on the investment. You know, I'm looking at a lot of residential systems, typically works out to about, you know, 15, 17 percent return on investment. Real quick, uh, mm -hmm. I'm not sure the uh, 
residential costs on average for a okay, solar so, array. So there's two things to look at. One is the gross cost of the system before any incentive. And that it really depends on the size of the system. But if you just take, say, like an average um, residential system, say it's you know 6 kW, 6,000 watts, um, it's going to cost roughly you know, 30000 up front. But then you're going to get your 30% tax credit. You're also going to get, well, if, if you had done this program and sold the pro those renewable energy credits to AEP, that's going to pay for another third of the cost. So you're roughly out of pocket. You know, once you've got your tax credit back and got the renewable energy money, um, you know, it's going to cost you maybe 12000 It's going to take about 10 years to get that money back through just savings on the electric, from your electric bill. Thank you. The second piece in here, too, I think I, I like to talk to people about this. You know, you're also, when you put one of these in, you're basically now becoming an owner of your electric generation. Whereas before, when you're paying the electric company, it's kind of like renting. You just keep paying, but you never, you're never going to own it. <laughs> Whereas if you make the investment in the solar, you now own the system. Eventually, it's paid off, and you're just getting free electricity. So that's one, one good way to understand how this works. Um, I stuck this in here. This is my electric bill on my house from last summer. As Dave talked about, like all summer, my electric bill is zero. I'm not paying anything. Um, you can't really see this, but there's actually a credit on here for $37. I think this was my August bill from last year. It's so all summer long. I'm getting a credit in the winter, I use that up. So over the course of a year, I'm currently producing about 95% of my electricity. Now one, one thing is a lot of people ask, you know, why don't we just install a whole bunch of solar and make money on it, right? But that, that doesn't work out. The utility is not going to let that happen. They don't want you to produce any more than you're actually using on the site. Um, this is just a slide just showing how the cost has come down. Uh, just, and this is just from 2011 to that, the end of 2012. This is the re residential. You know, the cost has come down. Like I said, it's currently actually lower than $5 per, per watt on the system. The bigger the systems are, the cheaper they are per watt. Um, but, you know, on the utility scale, it's down here as low as like, you know, just over $2 per watt, maybe even lower than that. So, you know, what's involved when you actually, I, I want to kind of just talk about from a residential point of, point of view, because that's, that's where most of my experience lies. So what's involved in actually doing that is, first of all, having someone like myself or Dave uh, come out and do a, a site assessment. So we take a look at, first of all, how much sun you know, is on the site. This tool here is called a solar pathfinder that's measuring the sun on, on the site. You know, you look at, uh, ideally, there should be a, a south-facing surface that has full access to the sun. Um, you know, how much space there might be on the roof, how much electricity is being used on, you know, for that location, um, what the budget is for the people have to spend on this system. So you kind of take all these things into the mix, come up with a design that's going to work for that customer, and um, you know, explain how the whole thing works in terms of you know, selling renewable energy credits, um, you know, getting permits in place, etc., and uh, move forward from there. So I just I stuck this in here too. So this just kind of talks about net metering. So I'm sure a lot of people in this room already understand this, but um, you know, when you're dealing with the utility, when you, and you install solar electric system, sometimes you're going to be producing more power than you're actually using on site. That excess power goes backwards through your meter onto the grid, and the utility is giving you credit for that. Other times, you're going to be using electricity, you know, from the power company. Say at nighttime when there's no sun. And at the end of the month, they're going to look at how much you gave them, how much they gave you, and they're going to bill you for the difference. So that's the net metering. So when you, when you do this, too, you sign a net metering agreement with the utility. That's part of, part of the process. Um, 
So, you know, Eco House is a small company, but we're growing pretty quickly. Um, we basically take care of the whole installation from beginning to end, take care of all the paperwork that's involved with the net metering agreement. Um, for example, the, the program that AEP had, there was a contract involved selling the renewable energy credits. So we take care of all that paperwork, get the permits in place, you know, um, come up with the, the design, buy all the equipment, get it installed, and um, you know, we try to use the highest quality components that are out there, uh, pay a little extra to, to make sure there's never a leak in the roof, um, and we're, we're guaranteeing that. And uh, you know, try to. It's, there, there's a whole range of products out on the market. I mean, there's I think as many as 250 companies that make solar panels these days. That number is always changing because some are going out of business, some are coming into the into the market. And um, but I'm trying to choose equipment that you know I think where the company's going to be around for the next 25 years. It's a reliable piece of equipment. And. Um, you know, I'm also trying to keep the price as low as possible, and because our company is very small at this point, you know, we don't have as much overhead as other companies, we're able to offer a pretty competitive pricing. And currently we're just focused on Central Ohio, and um, I don't like traveling very far, so <laughs> I like to keep it local, so, you know, all the jobs are in Central Ohio. So this is, I'm just going to show you some pictures, this is a system we just put in this year, it's about a mile away from here. Uh, it's, it's on the Westerville electric system. I think they only have a few residential uh, installations on their system. So um, it's on County Line Road, just about a mile away. So we did that this, this like a couple months ago. This is another, we've installed ground mount systems as well as roof mount systems. This is another one that's just south of Columbus. I, I really like these ground mounted systems because they, they have a lot of advantages. You can set them up, you know, so that they're facing directly south at the right angle. The panels are actually a little more productive because they stay cooler this way than being on a roof. So it's not always appropriate, but um, it's a nice way to do it. This is a question for you, Ward Dave, because I was thinking of when I was, when he was up there, that um, the panel has got a 40 year warranty. Mm -hmm. Your roof's got a 20-year warranty. Okay, that's a good point. So that's one of the things you're looking at at this is the site assessment is the condition of the roof. I usually tell people if the roof is older than, um, you know, like 8 or 10 years, you probably want to replace that roof. If it's a shingle roof, replace it before you install the solar. Okay, you don't want to put it on an older roof. It would be, be very costly to take the whole solar system off and replace the roof. That may have to happen at some point, but... Trying to avoid that. Does the solar help um, keep the roof? The, I, you know, I've read some articles about that. Um, <coughs> they can chime in on this, but um, I think the answer to that is yes. I think yeah. it makes the shingles last longer because they're not getting getting as much wear and tear. So now you're going to have little spots that aren't going to be getting the shade. There, that's true. No, it's outside the of the like footprint of the solar. Of the you cover the whole roof. You can't cover it right up to the edge. Well, no, well, unless you have the north side of your house, too. Correct. But the, the north side, side doesn't get the sun. So, nope. Cover it all the way around. How does the SREC work in a situation when, with Westerville if they own their own distribution? So, there, you know, a, there's other ways to sell SREC. So, a lot of our customers have sold SRECs through a broker. They're brokers, third party brokers that will buy the SRECs and they package those and then resell those to the utilities. So, for example, like this customer in Westerville, that's what they did. And then, you know, we work with those brokers to get that all set up. If you generate more electricity than you use, mm -hmm. and you're on the Westerville grid, do you get penalized like you would if you were on AEPs? What's you're your Andy, you're Andy Boatwright, aren't you? Next to you. <laughs> <laughs> Can you answer that question? <laughs> Uh, well, currently, you know, it's one for one. Yeah. That's not to say it'll stay that one. So this customer, I don't think they had to sign a net metering agreement. I don't think there was one in place. We have one. But there's no, there's no document to sign. So right. They need to go through the process with planning and development for interconnection, which is essentially permitting for any structural issues, any 
right. neighborhood issues in right. the state of Brown now is unusual. So Westchester was kind of a unique situation because it's kind of all contained in the same <laughs> same entity, really. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> uh, this is the house that we had on the uh, spring tour. This is in Powell, and um, this is half of the system. There's another half of it on the back of the house. Mm -hmm. That's about a three kW system. Um, you know, homeowners are very very pleased with it. I mean, this is you know an expensive house in an expensive neighborhood, but it uh, you know homeowners really like it. And there was there was a little issue with this one in terms of the homeowners association. We had to uh, they didn't really didn't have any uh, anything in the <coughs> documents about solar, but they were concerned about this, so we had a number of meetings with the homeowners association to make sure everybody was on board with it. And, uh, there was no problem. This is just another installation we did. This is in Gahanna. So anyway, I just wanted to show a few pictures. And that's thank, that's it. Thank you very much.